Hi guys, Hostman's Bin, two packages. One of those will be the power unit and the other will be the inverter for my Goodman's television. They're second hand, so they've been taken out of a broken television. So no idea whether they will be working or not. Obviously the seller guarantees that they're in working order. And no idea if it make any difference. Because I'm beginning to suspect it's actually the backlight array itself that's faulty. But we'll find out. No point in me uh, doing a video of me taking the back off again. It's just a matter of undoing the screws. So, so I'll take it off. We'll try the power board first. If that makes no difference, then we'll try the uh, inverter which is the bit that drives the backlight. So I've taken the back cover off. If you haven't seen the previous videos, that's the power unit. That's the mains feed in, which is disconnected. So we've got no power on here at the moment. And over here is the inverter board under that panel there. So we'll just try replacing this for now. I suppose I should have opened the box first, so we actually know whether we've got what we think we've got. Okay, looks the same. Numbers match. Right, I'll put the cover back on just so I don't accidentally touch any electrical parts. I just remembered if you haven't watched the rest of the videos, there's a connector goes on here to make these buttons work. Put a couple of screws in. One. Can't see in the sunlight whether it's on or not. Right, 
you can't see from there but the red light the off light is on press that button green on light is on and we still have no picture I've got the cover off again as you can see power is on and I'm just going to measure those outputs I've also got the switch there so I can just switch it on and off instead of having to have the cover in place so it's all switched on at the moment Five volts, five volts, four point six six, five, five, five. So that's exactly what we were getting with the old one. Now here we're looking for twenty four. 24, 24, 24, 24, so 24 from the four outputs there, 5 volts and uh, 4.66 or whatever it was from there, which is exactly what we were getting on that one. So that's the power board giving us exactly the same as that one was. The fact I couldn't actually see the screen is possibly because it's just such bright sunlight in here. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you shine a light through the front of the LED screen and that should throw enough light in there to illuminate the picture, which is normally illuminated by the backlight but only in a small area where the LED, where the light is. But I just couldn't see that today. So, changing that made no difference at all. So we will now change the inverter board. Again, no point in you watching me do that. I'll do that and then come back again. So, We'll open the other box. I'm actually eating my midday snack at the moment, but we'll open the box and see. Again, if you didn't watch the previous video, I had to release this metal panel that has the power board on it and the controls. I had to release that so you can actually get to the screws to release that panel so we can get that off. And I need to unplug that, unplug that, unplug that, 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 that and that. And hopefully that will lift off and I can put this one back on. Just check it's the same one. One two o six B one twelve F. One two o six B one twelve F. Ninety seven. 97. Yep, they look like they're the same fellas. Right, screwed that all back together. I forgot to mention you have to unplug that. Because to be able to move this board out of the way to clear those screws, 
I need to move it along so that doesn't reach. So I need to move it back, plug that back in again. And then we'll see what happens. Again, for the benefit of those who haven't watched the previous videos, to move that panel along, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine screws there you have to undo so you can release that panel and shift it along to be able to get to that bit and as I say I've got to plug that back in there okay we'll see what happens this time I just remembered something else I showed you which screws you had to move to remove that I forgot to tell you you also have to take that little plate off otherwise you can't get to that screw that's part of the plate or that plate and those screws there are what hold the stand on the bottom right so we've got the new uh, inverter on there power is on Any difference? Oh, look! Oh, -ho -ho. well, I have to say, I had given up hope, but it appears it was the inverter board that needed replacing, not the power board. Well, that's a turn up for the books. Seriously, I had given up on this. So, uh, yeah. we can't see anything on it because I've got no aerial plugged into it. Gosh, I am so surprised. So, quick summary. On the original power board, I'd changed some of the capacitors because they'd gone puffy. And that's one of the things you see in lots of videos about fault finding on these old flat screen televisions that the capacitors in here go puffy and then the voltages vary. I'd forgotten to actually, well, I skipped checking the voltages. I just went straight to the fact, oh, they look puffy, let's change them. So I changed them. They were cheap. I mean, I only changed two of them because they were the two that looked puffy. And they were, um, I think it was about £1.20 for a pack of five of them. So that was, you know, if that had been the fix, that had been a quick, cheap fix. I then, after that, measured the voltages out and the voltages all seemed about right. So I then stepped on to seeing whether I could power the backlight directly. And to power the backlight directly, I then found this thing does it. It converts um, 24 volt input. It has four feeds of 24 volt input, which initially I thought was making it 96 volts, but I'm fairly sure it was just four inputs so they could use thin wire or relatively thin wire to feed in there. I don't know, I'm just guessing, but anyway, this goes from 24 volts to high voltage. I don't know what the high voltage is, but there's warnings all along there that the output is high voltage. So we've just changed that and it's worked. I don't think changing the power board made any difference at all. Well, in fact, it didn't. So that power board's probably okay. Uh, I think I paid might have been £5.99, either £4.99 or £5.99 for the replacement power board. And this was actually cheaper. Uh, I think it was about £5.30 or £4.30, and that's including postage. They're ones that have been taken out of somebody else's broken television. So you're replacing a 41 with a second-hand one. But at the moment, 
we have a picture which we didn't have half an hour ago. Just another little bit for people who haven't watched this all the way through. We're talking about a Goodman's LD2667D, 26 inch LCT, LCD TV. And to get the back off, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We need to take the stand off as well. 10, 11, 12, 13. And then these three here, 14, 15, 16 screws. Not quite sure how many videos I've got in this series now. But I would guess in summary, as I mentioned a few times on the way through, I didn't measure the voltages on the power unit. I jumped straight to let's change the capacitors because some of them look puffy. If I'd have measured those outputs before we started, we'd have known whether we were getting the right voltages out of the power board. And then we might have thought maybe it's not the power board and we might have gone straight to the inverter board. Or we might have decided just not to bother. So I've spent about £12 on this and it's now working. If I'd have done my preliminary measurements and checks first, I'd have only spent about £5 on it and got it working. So learn from that what you like. I really, really, really wanted to have a go at replacing those capacitors because I'd seen lots of videos on it. But that was a waste of time in this case. So there we go. That's my summary. Thank you for watching. Well, there we go. We've now got his and hers televisions in the bedroom. Uh, it won't be staying there. I just put it up there because that's the only place I've got an aerial I can plug into it. So... Uh, yeah, my wife wasn't impressed when I said the new smart TV will have to go back to the shop and that one can go back downstairs and we'll use that one again. So I guess we're stuck with a spare television now. I suppose it can go in the spare bedroom. Or I could even use it as a computer monitor. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Okay success. Thanks for watching. There's always more information down in the video description and if you like this video you might like this one up here and you might like to have a look at my channel over here see what else I do. Thank you for watching.